All right, so hello everyone, I'm Steve Freund. I am a uh, Ruby developer at Springbuck, and today I'm going to talk about shoes. Uh, some of you may be familiar with shoes if you've pretty much ever watched a series of talks from RubyConf. You've probably seen a presentation of shoes for as long almost every year, it seems like. Uh, but I, mean, I, want, I just want to play this video because it's hilarious. Cheers. Cheers. This game is no sound. Cheers. <laughs> oh my god. Cheers. Let's get some shits. Yeah, but it's shoes. Cheers. It's hilarious. Wait, wait, it's, it's an hilarious video. Just like you know. <laughs> so, as far as uh, what shoes actually is. Wait, do it again. So, you already messed up my eye. Oh my god, cheers. <laughs> anyway, that's it. <laughs> so uh, that, that video was from around 2006, which is ironically in the same general time frame as Shoes was in the So when you talk about what Shoes actually is, you have to go back to this guy named uh, Why the Lucky Stiff. And he was a very prolific member of the community long before I was ever put in the community. But, uh, still, like, well known if you go to like conferences or read any movie blogs or anything. This is a self portrait. He has a real name and a real picture, but I think that this is way more expressive as who he sees himself as, as a person. And so he was uh, the author of a bunch of really, really famous Ruby stuff, including uh, Wire's Pointing Guide to Ruby, which Woo! is a Hilarious, if not particularly useful, introduction to the Ruby programming language. Uh, illustrated with uh, cartoon boxes and lots of strange humor. <laughs> he also was the creator of the of V1 of Try Ruby, which uh, is a really, really great introduction to the Ruby programming language. Uh, I actually have a. I'm switching to Chrome because. Because Apple's web tool, Apple's developer, or as far as developer tools are offline. <laughs> so you, if, uh, you may have seen this before. This is essentially like just a website to go practice some movie. Uh, it's really awesome, actually. It uh, has a form here that it looks like a terminal. You submit some movie code. It actually sends the code as a string back to the server, runs it, and then. So I use the computer. Can you up your font size? Uh, what? Up your font size? Okay. So if you look at the. Uh, what it actually sends back to the server. It sends it as a string. The server parses the string in a Ruby interpreter, runs it through, and then returns the result back to the console. So that's just a really cool hack to get people an easy introduction to Ruby that anyone can use. And that, that is still maintained by CodeSchool, actually. He also invented this. Uh, Another cool little introductory to Ruby programming called Hackity Hack. I I, this is actually no longer an active project, so I can't show you the actual project. I can show you news articles about the project. <laughs> uh, this is from uh, April 26, 2007. You may notice the cartoon boxes from uh, Wise Pointing Guide, and it's just a uh, cross platform desktop framework to practice programming specifically in Ruby. And then, more to the point of this talk, he also invented Shoes. Shoes was originally uh, written as the desktop framework for the Hackity Hack project that I just showed. And essentially, it allows the user to uh, practice Ruby without having to learn any other language. 
So when you think about your options for learning a language, if you want to actually have user interaction, you either have to do like web development, in which case you have to like know how a browser works and write HTML and JavaScript, and no one wants to do that. Or you have to uh, write like Swift or some other like actual desktop framework. But uh, or I guess when I was in college, they tried to teach us uh, OpenGL, which was just the like, most tedious and horrible uh, framework I've ever worked in. But Ruby like takes all that away and makes it super super easy to uh, create an app that you can interact with almost right away. Unfortunately, Y is uh, almost say he's no longer with us. He's still alive, probably. He is just no, no longer active in the Ruby community. He tweeted this in 2009, which is a really kind of a sad commentary of software, for being honest. Uh, I'm not going to read it out loud because it kind of depresses me. But then he just like disappeared. He deleted his GitHub, his Twitter, uh, essentially completely removed himself from the web. And yeah, the Ruby community lost a particularly fun and eccentric person. Anyway, back to shoes. So, Shoes has had several versions ever since Y left. Uh, Shoes 3 was the first version released after Y pretty much just left. Uh, and it was, his team was like, well, this guy's gone, but we don't want to, uh, we don't want to just abandon this project. So they released Shoes 3 in 2010. And uh, as they upgraded to newer versions of you know, Windows and OS X, and probably Linux, it just stopped working because you know, that's you know, how software works. And so in 2015, the team released version 3.2, which was a uh, had major bug fixes and essentially made it compatible with modern operating systems. Uh, Shoes 3.3 is the current continuation of the Shoes 3 project, but Shoes 4 is the like core Shoes team what they're actually working on daily. And it is a total rewrite of the original shoes uh, in a more Ruby-ish way. So I was really curious how it works, especially when I looked through the GitHub uh, page and saw that it was 98.9% Ruby, which is just like incredible. And that 1.1% is like the markdown files for like a readme's and wikis and stuff. So that's like incredible that they were able to make a complete uh, desktop framework in Ruby. And after reading into it, I learned that uh, it's written in JRuby so that they can interface directly with the uh, Java's SWT, which apparently stands for the Standard Widget Toolkit. And that's just a uh, graphics, fr graphics framework written in Java that allows you to, and the reason they chose Java is that it's entirely uh, cross-platform. Like, Java can be run on Windows or OS X without too much trouble. And then the actual interface with the graphics is purely in Ruby. So they uh, essentially, I read, I read through the source code and it was like, um, like directly interfacing with, the, uh, with Java through JRuby somehow. I don't remember exactly because I put this talk together like a I've slept since then. But it's really cool to check out. <laughs> you may be wondering, why should we even bother? Like, we have Rails. What do you need beyond, uh, what do you need from Ruby if you don't have Rails? And that is just a, that is blatant propaganda. Uh, <laughs> Ruby is, is so much more than just Rails. And, uh, I mean, unfortunately, I, this, is, this is something that I struggle with. Like, Unfortunately, users like UIs. I, I know, if, if everyone could just look at a, like an algorithm and just appreciate it for how beautiful it is, then you wouldn't have these problems. But unfortunately, users like to interface with the computer instead of just going through the command line. And if you are an entry-level programmer, you may not want to like have to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and all that, and all, everything to actually be able to make your own program, because that's like a really daunting task to have to not only learn a back-end framework like Rails, which uh, 
is pretty dense from the outside, if you remember back when you were a Rails movie. And, but Ruby, with, with, with shoes, all you need to know is Ruby. You can literally write all of it with uh, a basic knowledge of Ruby and a 10 minute guide on the internet. And it's, and that's like the biggest reason why, why I was so passionate about the shoes project is that he wanted to distribute Ruby and the joy of programming to as many people as possible. And here's some more concrete versions to use shoes, even once you like are more well versed in the community. Uh, well, it's it's super easy. Like you don't really need to know anything else beyond like your current Ruby knowledge that may come from Rails or uh, other like Sinatra, I guess, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, the biggest reason I started using it is that it can be stateful. And what I mean by that is, uh, when I was I was writing the, the actual reason I started doing using shoes is that I wrote an evolution algorithm in Ruby and was like, okay, how do I actually make graphics display it evolving? And I was like, well, I could use Rails, but HTTP is like not stateful, so I'd have to make heavy use of caching Ruby objects or make them initializable with like a, like a huge amount of data, and I just didn't want to bother with that. So instead, you can code up a shoes app that loads a, a uh, Ruby object into memory and then just holds it and you can interface with it directly through the uh, GUI rather than having to rely on like making a request to a server and all such. Uh, and then beyond that, just the fact that you don't need a web framework at all is pretty great because uh, there's a whole lot of like, specific knowledge and sometimes needed with web frameworks that is you don't always want to deal with. Uh, and then the entire app, app can be written in Ruby. That's just a plus for the Ruby nerds like uh, me and probably a lot of you. Woo. Yeah, it's uh, you, don't, you don't have to write JavaScript, which I know there's like a pretty strong hate of in the Ruby community, uh, myself included. And then lastly, this is actually new to Shoes 3, but you can, you can package your app as an executable. So you can, uh, once you're like, say your app's ready to go and like ready to ship to users, you can use Shoes to package it into and, like an actual application that you can load up uh, just by, like the user can just like put the icon on their desktop and load it up. Like they don't even need to interface the terminal at all, which is just, you know, even even better if you're like trying to make right cross platform software that, without using the browser. And so, but by far the biggest benefit is that like it's written in purely Ruby and you don't need any other technology. I, today at work I was bored, so I spent a little bit putting together this uh, this particular uh, may may. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, may, you may notice the, it's the Sidekick logo, so uh, I should really should credit Sidekick for the assist. Anyway, that's enough of me talking. Let's write some code, because that's what I'm better at. All right, so I was trying to, I really wanted to, dis to display one of my personal projects, and I was actually agreeing to this talk as a hope to like spur me to finish the projects, and that didn't work. So instead, <laughs> we're going to code up a uh, Magic 8-Ball application. So to make these shoes an app, it's actually surprisingly simple. All you need to do is, uh, you need to have shoes downloaded first of all, and that's honestly the hardest part of using shoes is that you have to figure out how, to, how you have to, I'm sorry. Easily the hardest part of shoes is figuring out how to uh, Load up Java six into uh, onto OS X so you can run JRuby nine, which is way hard. That was that was surprisingly difficult. I don't know, like, because the, the current version of Java is Java nine, I think, and for some reason JRuby only runs on Java six or Java seven. So, yeah. But then, anyway, my struggles with uh, the JVM aside, to make a shoes app, all you need to do is wrap a uh, application in shoes.app and then you use a do block. And then, where's the mouse?
And then all you need to do is just call shoes, and then the file that has the shoes at. And unless I somehow messed up that very basic starter. Oh, what do you know? Did you mean shoes? Shoes.app or shoe.app? Just kidding. <laughs> Live coding's hard. Ben? Ben? <laughs> ben, help. Mm -hmm. There we go. We have an application. It doesn't do anything, and it's completely empty. But we have an application. So, all right. So, first thing you need for a uh, Magic Eight Ball app is you need some fortunes, right? Well, I fortunately, no pun intended, have this file called fortunes.txt, which contains all of the uh, fortunes that I was able to scrape from Wikipedia. So let's just go ahead and, I'm actually going to copy and paste because I feel like I make fewer mistakes when I don't rely on myself typing. So we're just going to read it in from a file and then split on the new line so we have an array of fortunes. And in order to display things in Ruby, it's a, it's a, or a shoot, it's a super simple interface. There are these things called titles. You still see it in the back. Okay, cool. So you have titles, and it's a lot like a header tag in an HTML. I know I said that we don't need HTML or JavaScript knowledge, but I'm going to talk. I'm going to frame it in HTML because that's just what <laughs> is the best comparison. Uh, it's you can even add, pass properties like a line or a color or other things. Uh, but in this case, we're not going to do a deal with any of that stuff because I'm too lazy for that. And you can also change the size of your shoes application just by passing. Uh, properties like height, width, you can also pass like background and stuff to the application right off the bat. And so let's. So let's see what we have right now. So we are now we have an application that actually shows something. So in, in shoes, there are these things called stacks and flows. Essentially, a stack is just exactly what it sounds like. It you pass it elements and it just stacks them right on top of each other. And a flow is very similar to that, but instead of like stacking them on top of each other, it just squeezes as many as it can uh, on the same line and then wraps it to the next line. So it's a lot like a stack is like a new line delimited. A, like element region, whereas a flow is uh, has nothing in it like that. So, and just like with the app itself, oh no, some help. <laughs> and it, just like uh, the app itself, you can it makes heavy use of the do block. So let's. Create an input so the user can ask their questions. And we're going to call an edit line method, which just essentially inserts, inserts a, a user input box. And this is for fun. I'm going to uh, output the class of that. I'm going to look, put up, up the class and upload the, the app again. It takes a little while to load up. Java? Anyway, so uh, we have the title, and it just has like a very simple text box that I can type crap in. And then you notice that when I uh, call, I look at the class of that, it's, it's uh, actually literally just a Ruby object. So even though this is like a graphical interface, you can 
treat it as a Ruby object. And you could do stuff like pass that object to like a controller, so to speak, in order to control all your elements. Anyway, so users like buttons, right? I'm not a front end developer, so I can give me a break here. So how about we have a submit button so they can submit their question? Realize that I have a more forward function after I This is why you practice your talks, kids. I thought you did practice. You said. People lie, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ruin him like that. <laughs> All right, so I've now included a, uh, a title that is the response and a button for the user to submit stuff. And I'm going to call the replace method on that and that's going to do exactly what you might think it would do, and it's going to replace the text with whatever. <clears throat> whatever string I pass to that method. Oh, didn't find my button. Try saving the file. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe getting your employer to pay for sublime text. <laughs> you didn't give me a monitor, man. <laughs> All right, so. That's not true. We kept finding a new one. We didn't take it. So this is true. It's, it's, we tried to give you some text time. highlighting for your editor, too, and you wouldn't take it. That's right. Every time I type something and then put the submit, it's going to replace the text with in this case, that's not a question because I'm not putting in a question. But let's say that I want to respond to the user's input and not just try to infuriate them by never doing what they want to do. Let's write some actual Ruby. So I don't, I don't know if you guys believe in magic eight balls or not. But in, in, in this case, we're going to simplify it and just pull a random value from an array. I know, I know it's not a real. I know this won't be a real magic eight ball then. But let's just just pretend. We're playing with magic. <laughs> All right. So now, if I do. <coughs> You can't see this. I'm type. I'm asking Magic Eight Ball. Am I prepared for this talk? And then I click submit, and it it tells me you may rely on it. Not sure what it's saying, but anyway. So that's all. That's all well and good, but uh, it doesn't even look like a Magic Eight Ball, right? So let's write. Let's draw some shapes. Now, uh, Shoes has a very expansive uh, library for drawing actual shapes. Uh, in, in this case, a Magic 8 Ball is, uh, well, a ball. It is the color black and has an 8 on it, correct? So, we are going to draw in the and I could pass the color to this, but uh, I'm, I'm cheating and I know that shoe's default marker is black. And so you can specify the size of your circle, in this case 250. You can specify the position on the page. In this case I'm saying 250 pixels from the left and 100 from the top. And that will automatically draw. near my displays. Uh, 
Here we go. We have what is most what is part of the, of the magic eight ball. So just like that, with a single line of ruby, we were able to draw a shape. Granted, a very simple shape, but uh, you can, you can imagine how like this is like the very basics of uh, like the like graphic de development and stuff. You can like pass this to a small child and tell them like. This is how you control the size and the same control position, and they can make all sorts of fun stuff. Which is why uh, uh, why I was so passionate about this is that you could you could literally give this to a small child and they could just draw fun pictures and learn how to code. Anyway, so we need eight, right? Well, I'm just gonna uh, make an eight. This is, in this case, I'm just gonna pass a string to a banner, which is just a really large text field. Uh, I'm going to say that it's going to be uh, 100 pixels tall, so that's like the font size. Uh, it's going to be 490 pixels from the left, so hopefully roughly the center of the eight ball. It's going to be 325 from the top, again, roughly half, uh, roughly in the center. And then we're going to say it's white. And let's see how close I am to the center. Not bad, I'll take it. And so I'm gonna declare that this is exactly what the product team asked for. <laughs> it, is, it is a magic eight ball app. And you, can, you can ask the question. Um, <laughs> is Ruby cool? And the user can submit a question. Uh, fake news. <laughs> what? Great yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, for those, for those of you who keep track at home, in uh, 13 lines of Ruby, we were able to develop a uh, perfectly acceptable app. <laughs> and uh, you can do that with all, all sorts of uh, different apps and so like I highly recommend doing it like a fun personal project tool to use to like create some sort of graphic display and uh, let's just say we, we, and since everything here is a Ruby object we can even like do more with it like say I wanted to I'm going to create a I'm going to create my own You have a typo. That's fine. As long as it's self consistent, it doesn't matter, right? Oh, okay. Repsons. Repsons. I regret this immediately. <laughs> Repons? <laughs> And we could define, let's see, for example, to be honest. You've gone off script, haven't you? I have totally gone off script. All right. I'm trying to be clever. Like anyway, we, I, I could control all this stuff with a, uh, like a Ruby, with other Ruby objects if I wanted to, just because it's, it's purely in Ruby. It will hold all of your objects in memory for as long as you ask, ask it to. And I'm going to go ahead and stop there before I embarrass myself further. <laughs> no, you've you've done great. Uh, so, just a couple quick credits. You gotta give it up for why. Uh, the shoes team is like still actively developing developing it. Uh, I know Miles met them at RubyConf, and they're like apparently are very nice and very responsive. And then uh, I highly recommend for your next presentation needs to use Ruby. Yes, it's a pretty awesome framework. It's it's a node. It's a essentially you run a local node server and it gives you access to all these cool things. So yeah, that's all I got for you. Thank you.